natin. Okay, so magandang araw. Now, ang topic natin ngayon ay finite geometric series. So, pag sinabi natin series, you know that series is the sum of the terms of a sequence. So, in this case, we are dealing with geometric series. That means the sum of the terms of geometric sequence. Now, dun muna tayo sa first part, finite. Ibig sabihin, may first term, syempre, and may last term. So, the sum that we are going to get is from the first term up to the n term, denoted as S sub n. So, remember S sub n? That means the sum from the first, the sum from the first up to the n term. So, how do we determine the sum of the terms of a geometric sequence. Now, we have two considerations. The first consideration, if the ratio is equal to 1. So, if the ratio is equal to 1, use this formula. So, do not forget the formula. S sub n equals A sub 1 times the quantity 1 minus R raised to n all over the denominator 1 minus R. This is only applicable if R is not equal to 1. Now, if R is equal to 1, then simply use the formula. S sub n equals A sub 1 times n. Yun lang. Okay. Now, there's another formula for S sub n if the last term is given. And this, this formula is actually a, a lot easier. That is, if the last term is given. So, if the last term is given, use S sub n is equal to A sub 1 minus a sub n, that's the last term, times r, all over the denominator 1 minus r. So this is a special formula. This can only be used if the last term is given. So, now let's try to solve some problems involving getting the sum of the terms of a geometric sequence. So let us have the following. So as you can see, 1, 2, 4, and so on is a geometric sequence. So we need to determine the sum from the first term 1 up to the last term a sub 10. So the last term is not given, so we have to use the first formula. So let us identify the given first. So we have a sub 1 is 1. To determine the ratio, remember when we get the ratio, we have to divide consecutive terms. So, pwedeng ito if divide natin o pwede rin to 1, 4. No? But remember, when we are dividing, we always divide from the right to the left. So right over left. So if we have 1, 2, 4 as the first three terms, so we can divide right over the left. So the ratio would be 2 over 1. Pwede rin yung 4 over 2. Walang problema dun. So, 2 divided by 1, that would be 2. So, the common ratio is 2. Now, let's solve the sum using the formula S sub n is equal to A sub 1 times 1 minus R raised to n all over 1 minus R. So, simplifying, rather, substituting all the given. So, A sub 1 is 1 times 1 minus the common ratio is 2 raised to 10. So since we are getting S sub, rather, the sum up to the 10 term, so change this to 10. So this would be S sub 10. So 2 raised to 10 over 1 minus 2. Simplifying this, so yung 1 dito, pwede nating tanggalin because any number multiplied to 1 is just the same number. So we have 1 minus 2 raised to 10 all over 1 minus 2 is negative 1. So, remember, using the PEMDAS rule or the GEMDAS rule, exponent first before multiplication, division, and addition, subtraction. So, that means we have to raise 2 to 10 first before doing any subtraction. So, 1 minus 2 raised to 10. If you don't have a calculator, then you can solve this manually. 2 times 2 times 2 times 2 up to 10 factors of 2. But if you have a calculator, then let's use our calculator. So, 2 raised to 10 is equal to 1,024. So, we write 1,024 over negative 1. So, 1 minus 1,024 is negative 1,023 divided by negative 1. So, positive divided by negative, that would be positive. Therefore, S sub 10 is positive 1,023. And that's it. Very simple. 
Now, let us try to solve another problem. In this case, in number 2, we are going to determine S sub 8. So, the sum from the first up to the 8th term. So, let's look at the given. We have 48, then negative 24, then positive 12, and so on. So, let us determine the common ratio. So, we have A sub 1, that's 48. The common ratio can be determined by dividing two consecutive terms from right to left. So, we have negative 24 divided by 48. So, just simplify this. So, we can divide 24 and 48 by 24. So, 24 divided by 24 is 1. 48 divided by 24 is 2. So, therefore, the common ratio is negative 1 half. So, let's now solve for the sum. Using the formula S sub n is equal to A sub 1 times 1 minus R raised to n all over 1 minus R. Substitute all the given. So, S sub 8 is equal to our A, A sub 1, the first term is 48 times 1 minus. Since the ratio is negative, so maglagay tayo ng parenthesis dito ha. So, negative 1 half sa loob and then the exponent 8. All over 1 minus, do not forget the parentheses, negative 1 half. So let us simplify the numerator and the denominator. So this is 48 times, so remember the PEMDAS rule, exponent first, before subtraction. So negative 1 raised to 8, that would be positive 1 over 2 raised to 8. So ganun pag nag-simplify ng, pag nag raise ng fraction, to a certain exponent. Ah. So, numerator, then denominator. So, negative 1 raised to 8 is positive 1. Over 2 raised to 8 is what? So, let's find out. So, 2 raised to 8 is equal to 256. So, minus 1 over 256. All over, so this is negative. This is minus negative. So, the rule is change. Change the sign. This will be positive. And change this to addition. So that would be 1 plus, change the sign, 1 half. Now, let's simplify the numerator and the denominator. So 48 times, we, uh, you know the shortcut, right? We just multiply this. 256 times 1 is 256. Then, we still have here minus 1. Minus 1 over 256 over so this is 1 times 2 is 2 then we have here plus so plus 1 all over the denominator 2 I repeat 256 times 1 ito yun minus 1 ito yun all over the denominator 256 and so the de denominator 2 times 1 is 2 ito yun plus 1 okay all over the denominator 2 now we could simplify, we can simplify the numerator and the denominator further. So this is 48 times 256 minus 1 is 255 over 256 over 2 plus 1 is 3 over 2. Now, we know the rules in dividing fraction. So when we divide fraction, get the reciprocal of the denominator and multiply it to the numerator. So let's write the numerator first. The numerator is 48 times 255 over 256 times, get the reciprocal of the denominator, that would be 2 over 3. So, times 2 over 3. Now, let us simplify this by cancellation technique. So, I think we can simplify uh, what? 48 and 3. 48 and 3. So, 48 divided by 3. That would be, what? 16. So, 16. Then, what else? I think we can simplify 2 and... 16 and 256. Pwede rin yung 2. Walang problema dun. But I see na parang mas madali yung 16 and 256. Kasi, 16 divided by 16 is 1. And 256 divided by 16 is 16. Yun. So... Para mas malinis, isulat natin dito. So, we have 255 times 2 over 16. And I think we can still simplify 2 and 16. Na? So, 2 divided by 2 and 1. 16 divided by 2 is 8. So, therefore, the sum up to the 8th term is 
255 over 8. So I think we can no longer simplify this, so that would be the final answer. Napakadali lang, na? Very simple. So, wag kayong matakot sa fraction, napakadali lang yun. Anyway, if you have calculator, you can always use calculator. Sige, I'm going to show you how to enter this value to your calculator. So, maglagay muna tayo nito, fractions. And then we have 48 times, let's open parentheses, 1 minus... So, we need another parenthesis for negative 1 half. So, maglalagay tayo ng fraction. So, negative 1 half. So, negative 1 over 2. Then, close parenthesis. Place to 8. Okay. Then, another parenthesis to close this binomial over the denominator 1 minus open parenthesis. Then, Enter fraction, this one. This is negative 1 over 2. Yon. Then, close parenthesis. Okay? So, let's see. If this would be really 255 over 8. Let's check. That's it. And the answer is 255 over 8. So, if you have a calculator, you can always use your calculator to check. Okay? Now, let's try to answer the third problem. So, let's answer the third problem. So, in number three, we are asked to determine the sum of these terms. So, 18 plus 18 plus 18 plus and so on plus 18. In this case, there are 125 18s in the series. So, is this geometric? Yes, because if we are going to divide two consecutive terms in this sequence. So, 18 times eight, 18 divided by 18, that would be 1. 18 divided by 18 is also 1. 18 divided by 18 is also 1. So, they have all equal values for the ratio. So, this is a geometric sequence with ratio 1. So, the ratio is 1. Since the ratio is 1, then we cannot use the previous formula that we are using. So, based on the theorem, if the ratio is 1, the sum up to the n term is a sub 1 times n. That's simple. So, we'll be using s sub n is equal to a sub 1 times n. So, let's go back to the problem. So, the sum up to, there are 125, 18. So, the sum up to 125 is equal to a sub 1 is 18 times 125 so what is 125 times 18 you can do this manually but i will be using a calculator for faster solving so 125 times 18 is 2250 so therefore the sum up to 125th term is 2250 that's simple okay now let us have the last problem we have problem number four so, we want to determine the value of the geometric series. So, take note of the terms. So, we have here a last term. The last term is given. The last term is 1 over 64. So, we could use the formula S sub n is equal to A sub 1 minus A sub n times R all over 1 minus R. So, let's try solving the sum since the last term is given so a sub n is 1 over 64 and we have here the first term the first term is 64 and let's solve for the ratio so we have 64 negative 32 positive 16 and so on so to get the ratio just get two consecutive terms and then divide from the right over the left so, negative 32 divided by 64, just simplify this. So, I think these are all divisible. This two are divisible by 32. So, 32 divided by 32 is 1. 64 divided by 32 is 2. So, the common ratio is negative 1. So, we just substitute this. So, therefore, the sum up to the n term, up to the last term is equal to a sub 1 is 64 minus... The last term is 1 over 64 
times the ratio is negative 1 half over 1 minus, do not forget the parentheses, negative 1 half. So that would be 64. So this is negative times negative would be positive. So positive 1 times 1 is 1 over 64 times 2 is 128. All over. So this is minus negative. So that would be plus. So 1 plus 1 half. So simplifying this, remember the shortcut. Just multiply this. Then plus 1. And then multiply this. Then plus 1. Over the denominator. So that would be 64 times 128. So, using the calculator, we have 64 times 128. That would be 8,192. So, 8,192 plus 1 over 128. All over, 2 times 1 is 2 plus 1 over the denominator. So, simplifying this, we have 8,193 over 128. All over 3 over 2. So remember the rule in dividing fraction, write the numerator first, so that would be 8193 over 128 times the reciprocal of the denominator, 2 over 3. So let's simplify the fraction. So I think one, 2 and 128 are simplifiable by dividing by 2. So 2 divided by 2 is 1, 128 divided by 2 is 64. So, 64. Then, 8193 divided by 3. So, let's see if these are divisible. So, let's divide. 8193 divided by 3. Yes, it's divisible. So, 3 divided by 3 is 1. 8193 divided by 3 is 2,731. So, therefore, the answer would be 2,731 over 64. So the sum up to the last term is 2,731 over 64. Now, using our calculator, let's see if the sum would be correct. So we are going to enter this one. So this is fraction. So let's enter fraction icon. So that would be 64 minus... So we have here another fraction, 1 over 64 times, we have here another fraction, negative 1 half, close parentheses, over 1 minus, open parentheses, negative 1 over 2, then close parentheses. Let's see if we have the same answer. That's it. So the answer is 2,731 over 64. It's very easy. You can do it.